Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. And I will take just a minute to give a really warm welcome to everybody who is new to my channel because I know there are quite a few in terms of where I was a few days ago to where I am whenever this is being uploaded, which is only probably a few days. So yeah, uh, a nice big warm welcome to everybody who's new. Thank you for, for subscribing and for coming on board. And I also want to have and offer a, a big shout out or thank you to the one and only Miss Kelly Ann Maddox for taking the time to, to shout out and recommend my channel. Uh, it means so much and I never would have expected that and I'm just so grateful and I really don't have the words to articulate exactly how grateful I am for that as somebody who is on here to have dialogues and find community uh, to to speak on certain topics and to share certain things and uh, have that be something I want to do and then to have somebody say who has um, the audience that she has, who has the influence that she has, shout me out and recommend me as somebody to turn to in terms of the dialogues that I'm say having or starting or um, in terms of the topics I like to speak about. It means so much. Uh, also as somebody who's a spiritual business owner and trying to establish themselves, that also means a lot uh, from coming from her, somebody who is a very highly established and respected spiritual business owner uh, herself. So yeah, that, it just means a lot. And so welcome to all of the newcomers and a big thank you to Kellyanne Maddox. I appreciate all of you. So yes, now without further ado, we will get into what the title is telling you all this video is actually about in its entirety. So we are going to be talking about the idea of a daily practice and getting started in one maintaining it which i think is a difficult part of this and and expanding it or growing it and so i put or daily practice practice being in quotes i know as somebody who was new to this not all that long ago in terms of at least being on youtube and and involving myself in circles. I hadn't even heard about really the idea of daily practice in my book readings and a lot of my experience as a, a reader, a tower reader and a magical practitioner was solitary even in that I wouldn't watch YouTube videos for the first few years. And so coming on YouTube and hearing certain terms that I hadn't heard from books like practice or daily practice um, that was interesting for me. It, it was now well over a year ago, but still I didn't really know what to make of it. And it took a while for me, a while of me watching various people talk about it to fully understand what it was. So I'm going to take the time to explain it as best I understand it so that hopefully you, will, you won't have to watch, you, anybody watching, won't have to watch multiple videos trying to figure it out uh, like I did. And so... What I mean by daily practice is really anything that you routinely do each day. And of course, in, in these circles, we're speaking more on magic and divination, things related to that. But really, it's just a routine. Um, daily practice is a routine, plain and simple. So uh, I would make it more specific, but to make it more specific would probably make it confining and restrictive. And really, there's so much that can be factored into a daily practice that I think I would do it a disservice to restrict it by making a more, a more specific definition. So we're going to keep it to a routine, routine. But because we this is a channel that speaks on magic and divination and tarot and witchcraft, that's really what we're getting at here. That's probably why you're watching this and what made you want to watch this. So we're speaking on that specifically. And I have some notes on daily practice, and I'm going to be referencing my own to a to a, a good degree, just because I think that that is what I know. It's what I'm familiar with. It's a way for me to offer examples for the points that I'm getting at. So I have some tips pulled up on my handy dandy laptop. Yes, it's covered in Peppa Pig stickers. We love Peppa Pig here. <laughs> So the first one that I have is to sm uh, start small 
and manageable and slowly add. So I think it's all well and good to feel energized and really gung-ho about starting a daily practice. I want to do all of these things every day and get into this routine and have X, Y, and Z play out in my day. But it's another to make them all happen. And sometimes when you try to put too many eggs in that one basket all at once, it becomes overwhelming really quickly. It is... It winds up being almost heavier, so to speak, if it were a basket, heavier than we anticipated, especially when you're carrying it over a long span of time. And so you fall off the wagon, it becomes untenable, uh, the, the energy wanes, and suddenly you're left with just so much that isn't manageable and you... It can be depressing. You can... Uh, depressing in that it's sad, you feel like you've let yourself down or that you aren't capable of the things you set out to do. And I do think that some of that can be mitigated by just taking off manageable bite-sized bits as opposed to more than we can chew. And so starting, say, a daily practice with one thing. What is the one thing, the top thing on our list that we want to be engaging in every day? And maybe it is a daily card pull. If you are interested in divination or cardomancy of any sort and so you pull one tarot card every day and that's the one thing you're going to start with and every single day without fail you do that okay that's great we start with that that's starting manageably uh, and then we're going to slowly add so this would be more of that maintaining and growing so if all else fails we're pulling a card every day but once we feel like we've really gotten into that rhythm and like that's basically just like breathing. It's not really something we have to carve out time for anymore. It just happens very naturally. That's when you can think about maybe adding something in. So maybe after two or three weeks of pulling a card uh, and doing the related things with that, maybe you do a little journal entry with it, what have you, then it's time to maybe say, okay, I want to meditate each day too uh, for X amount of time at this time of day. And then you start to try to factor that in and you take it nice and easy, see how that works. Does it feel like too much? Is it, is it nice when the two coincide together to have, say, a meditation and a poll? And do they enhance each other? Do we want them at opposite ends of the day, one feeling like it's starting your day and the other feel like it's completing or the culmination of your day? How do you want it to feel and how do you want it to be structured? So these are things to play with. And I think that part of that is really fun to, to see how you incorporate them and for for what purposes to meet what ends what have you if that makes sense and so that's the first bit just start manageably and slowly add um, and play around with how you want them to work in your day and for what reasons next I have be realistic so this this plays off of the last one how much time do you have what already interests you what supplies are idle and need to be used or could be getting you could be getting used, could be used. Um, so yeah, uh, deciding that you're going to meditate for an hour is really awesome. But if you say work a full time job, and you're in and out of the house, and you have all these chores and responsibilities, trying to work in an hour can be really difficult. And so it's not necessarily realistic for you and your current schedule as it stands. And so understanding that maybe it's more manageable for you to say i'm going to maybe you can still attain that hour but by giving yourself a half an hour in the morning right when you wake up and a half an hour in the evening right near bedtime and you know that say a chunk that is an hour is not going to work for you at any one given time and so you need to divide it into separate areas of the day that is more realistic for you try to think about say items that are idle so what i mean by that is that are you going to try to engage in a daily practice that means you have to go out to a metaphysical store and pick up a whole new set of tools to to do what it is that you want to do? Or do you have so many awesome, really great, witchy, metaphysical, divin divinatory tools that you can use for this daily practice? And maybe trying to even structure a daily practice that is around making use of those tools. So that way they aren't just sitting idly going to waste and if you really aren't feeling so inclined to use them, consider moving them on, letting them go, uh, rehoming them. That can also be a great option. But I just mean that it shouldn't be something that you have to up, have a sort of upheaval in your life, that you have to go out and, and 
acquire all these supplies for. Um, the whole point of, I think, a daily practice is to be easy and manageable and fun and just something that you're weaving into your day very seamlessly. At least its end product should be, it should feel seamless in a way. So that being said, next we have tricking yourself. And this is one that I need to really clarify because I don't necessarily mean you should be I don't mean this in a nefarious way. What I mean by this is actually, well, I'm referencing my own practice in this, and I think that this is something others could benefit from. I sort of tricked myself. I wanted to journal more. I wanted to make that part of my daily practice, and I knew that whether it meant magic or writing down tarot pulls and draws, I wanted to journal more. And so I decided that I was going to pull one card a day, and I was going to journal on that card. And that was it. And it wasn't anything crazy. I was going to write maybe like a little paragraph of keywords and phrases. And that's how it started. And so I started to find over the course of a few days that I was picking up my journal more randomly. I would write down my thoughts, my feelings, anything sort of magical that was going on. I found myself writing about the trees outside. Um, and those were things that I wasn't doing before. I would do those daily card draws. But just because I had already picked up my journal, I already had it in my hand and I wrote that down and I found that I had, I had the journal open. I just felt like I was already in the mode of writing. So I just continued writing or later in the day, it didn't feel so intimidating or far fetched to pick up the journal and write about something else. And it was really just me tricking myself, quote unquote. I told myself, this is the bare minimum. This is the one thing you have to journal about each day or that you were telling yourself you should journal about each day. And in doing that, I felt more inclined to journal in a larger way, on a larger scale. And even now, I don't pressure myself to journal so much, but I do have very mm, realistic journaling, daily, daily journaling goals in mind when I go in and I fulfill them and I find that in doing that I journal a lot more about other things so let me show a bit of what I'm talking about so I usually will do my daily draw from my Thoth deck I didn't really think about all the things that I would have on my lap at this time so I will do my daily draw from this Thoth deck that's my primary deck that I use for myself with clients etc and so I find it helpful, uh, it just helps to keep in practice. And so I'll, I'll pull my card from there. And then before I journal, now I've tricked myself and this is where we're getting into also that idea of growing and adding. So back to the beginning, start small and adding or growing. After I felt comfortable with just pulling the card, writing a little bit on the card, I decided that, you know, I wanted to read this book but I've read a bunch of reference style books on the Thoth Tarot. I didn't want to read this cover to cover in a traditional sense. And so I told myself that I would read the excerpt or section on the given card that I pull each day. And so I will pull my card, then I will read its section in this book. And then this is like we, the progression of growing. Then eventually I would just do that. And so after a time, I was like, you know, I am rereading the book of Thoth, but I think it would be helpful to really instill what Crowley, the creator, had to say on any given card. And so I'll take the time also to read the excerpt or entry on a given card from here. So I'll read the excerpts from both books on the given card that I've drawn. I write my little paragraph of keywords and phrases. Then now I will take a quote from the excerpt of, excerpt of the card in the book of Thoth. So it's always one sentence. I'll pick one sentence from the card description that I feel like I really jive with or that's applying to that day. And then I'll write another larger paragraph that's more essay style of me almost unpacking the quote, really digging into it and seeing how I feel about it. And sometimes really interesting insights jump out. And so that daily practice started with a single card draw where I would write a few keywords and phrases to now reading excerpts from two books, picking a quote, writing almost like a small essay style thing. And if I, I know for a fact, if that, if I had started out that way, I would have fallen off. It would have seemed and felt untenable. It would have felt like something that was just too much for me to manage. 
but because I slowly added, waited until the practice, the act of it, of the thing itself didn't feel like much at all before adding something else onto it, now it just feels like this daily exercise, like a, a good 20 minute sit down where I'm relaxing, it doesn't feel like a chore at all, and it's because I've really consciously mapped its progression and slowly added to it as opposed to lumping it all on, having no idea how I'm going to react to the individual pieces and how I'm going to manage it within my day. And I've accounted for my own sake of well-being in that a lot of newness at once can feel overwhelming. Um, there's an element that's exciting, but there's also an element that's resistant. And so I, I like to think about all of those things and I think it's helpful to, to slowly add for that reason. And yeah, so I will journal. It's, this is just a nice little cheap dot journal that I got at Barnes and Nobles. I want to say for like $4 on sale. It's nothing fancy, just plain, plain black journal. And I've really been enjoying that. And that's one of my bigger, I would say, conscious daily practices going on now. But the first thing I thought as it was starting to grow was that I was tricking myself or when I began to journal more as a result of the, the journaling that I told myself I had to do, I felt like I was tricking myself, but in a really funny way that was beneficial to my well-being and goals that I'd set out uh, to accomplish. So next we have making the mundane magical. I have examples like turn making coffee into a daily ritual, make a shower, and energetic cleansing. So I have this actually in another video, a similar tip, which is in getting out of a magical slump. So I'll link that below. It's kind of a different topic. Well, it is a different topic, but if you find yourself in a magical slump, maybe that's one to check out. Or if you find that your daily practice is kind of droll, that might be one to check out. But I think that this top, this topic, I think that this tip is applicable to this area as well. Uh, making the mundane magical is an easy way or an easy thing that you can incorporate into your everyday life. And so as far as a, a daily practice or a daily personal practice goes, this is something that I think is one really realistic. Um, it's something that we can do with almost no extra time on our hands. So if our day is booked and jam packed, this is still something I think that those that individuals who find themselves in that position can do. And as far as a few examples go, every morning I do take the time to say either make tea or coffee. And I do make that a magical ritual or practice where I feel like I'm imbuing the drink itself with intention and energy. So in the morning, especially, I want to imbue it with energy so that I'm ready to go for the day. But I do hold my hands over it. I say a few words and I'm very conscientious about the crafting of the drink. So say when I'm making the coffee, I, I do use oat milk. I'm not exactly vegan, but I do. I try to go for plant based things. And I'm also really conscious of my dairy intake just because of the way it makes me feel. So I use oat milk, especially in my morning coffees. And so to me, that feels right. It feels like I'm, this is going to sound funny, but I feel almost like the idea of it coming from oats is almost like I'm drawing from the earth in some way, like this, this grain of life. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Me saying it out loud feels a lot funnier than it does in my head, but I will sit there and try to imbue it. I'll really think about the idea of a coffee bean coming from a plant and if having these sort of chemical properties that give it caffeine, for example, um, on mornings, say, where I make tea, I'm really conscientious about the type of tea I'm making and what herbs or leaves and things are in that tea. And also, say, I add, like, a dash of honey for sweetness and happiness. That's something that I might do on a day where I'm looking to have my moods be uplifted a bit and really get in touch with that happier aspect or sometimes I'll even bring crystals into this where I'll have like a little citrine point around when I'm crafting uh, my morning beverage so that's one daily ritual or magical daily practice that I always engage in but it's different it can be different at least every day depending sometimes it's coffee it's tea a different tea different ingredients but regardless my morning beverage is its own part of my daily practice now Next, I have being, uh, well, before I move on to that, making the, the mundane magic, I want to say that you can do that with anything. You can do that, like I said, with the using a shower as an energetic cleansing. Say 
you shower in the evening and you've had a long day, using that not just as a physical cleansing of your body, if you take the time to say, set the intention and energetically kind of like charge that shower space in whatever way works for you, depending on your, your path or your background, and you use that to really get off that, that excess energetic buildup, things that might be dragging you down or just kind of like clogging your space, that's a great way to, to have a daily practice or something to incorporate into a daily practice, I should say. You could also do things like a daily walk and making that really uh, an opportunity for observational learning, something to journal on. You could have sort of like a attending to your plants if you have a garden and that's part of your daily practice and that's something that's magical for you if you're into herbalism or uh, green witchcraft or really just being a part of the earth. You don't need to necessarily have a title for it, but all of those things are kind of making the mundane magical and I think that we can benefit from looking at them in that way because the perspective is going to influence how the action is performed, in what way the action is performed, the effect that the action has on us. And so perspectives are important. If we are viewing these mundane actions as something magical or greater than, um, if we're adding a layer of mysticism to them for ourselves, it's going to affect us in one way or another, hopefully positively. So keep that in mind. Next, I have accountability. So acknowledging mistakes and skipping days, being honest about laziness or lack of desire and being curious. So that's a lot. Being accountable is important. Um, so basically, I'm going to make this two sides of one coin. There's being kind to yourself and there's being accountable. Nowhere in this are we going to be harsh on ourselves. There's, I don't think getting down on ourselves or really beating ourselves up over any of this is going to be beneficial. The whole idea of a daily practice is to benefit us, to enrich our day, uh, to further the things that we're interested in and our practice and our path, to make us feel better, to have us perform better as human beings in whatever capacity we want to be performing in. And so, yes, being kind and accountable are both important. I'll start with accountability in just saying that there's no use in, say, quote unquote, lying to yourself or making excuses that aren't actually the case for things like, well, I, I couldn't really have done it because I had to go to my friend's house and, uh, and then I wanted and then I did this and I drove the car here. Like if you had the time and you realize that you just didn't use it properly, make sure you're telling yourself that. Um, and then maybe question why it was that you didn't use the time properly. Was there something about your daily practice that you weren't jiving with that day? And that's totally okay. But telling yourself that you couldn't have done it that day when you tangibly physically could have done it is not helpful. But to acknowledge that you could have done it and then wondering and inquiring why you didn't do it. That's where we get at something. Um, maybe it's that on that given day you you really just weren't feeling it. Like that's fine, that's valid enough. But just telling yourself that um, and maybe trying to flesh out what that means. Why was I not feeling it? Am I in a bit of a slump? Is that a topic of something that doesn't interest me anymore? Um, was I having a down day? What was making that a down day? Was I looking for distractions as opposed to seeking out meaning? Why did I need a distraction? All of that's important to delve into. Um, so being honest and it's okay to say, I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, but I don't think it's really helpful to say, I, oh, well, I didn't have time for it today when I know well and good I did have time for it today. Just saying that. Um, and yeah, and if you're just being, say, lazy, I'm always calling myself out on laziness. And that's not to say, um, for example, if I'm not feeling it and I'm under the weather or emotionally I'm just not up for it, that's not laziness. Laziness is when all is good and well and I'm looking right at that deck and I just choose not to do it and seek out, say, a distraction or something like that instead. Or I fall into the trap of scrolling through my phone. Um, it's important, I think, to hold yourself accountable and acknowledge these things. I don't think it's helpful to be harsh or to, uh, to have a sort of punishment or reprimandation system in place. I don't think that that's helpful. Um, I think it's really about fleshing out why the action occurred. Why did I miss that day? Why did I not do this? Why did I seek out that instead? 
understanding is a lot better, I think, than reprimanding. So that would be my biggest tip in accountability. Understand, don't reprimand. I'm coining that phrase. <laughs> so um, next we have being kind to yourself. And that's like that positive point that I really want to touch upon. Um, if you miss a day, you haven't failed. That doesn't mean that you should stop. I know that personally I've had daily practices where I've started a daily practice or started the idea of a daily practice time and time again um, and fallen off for one reason or another, which is why I'm sharing these tips because I've been going strong for quite some time and really adding to my own. And now I'm, I finally feel like I'm at a point where I have tips that I can share because what I'm doing is working for me. This does not at all mean that these tips are going to work for you, just so you know. Um, but I hope that they will. So, or at least some of them will. So being kind to yourself just in that you don't need to, again, reprimand yourself. Because you've missed a day doesn't mean that you're a failure and that you should stop. If you bite off more than you can chew and find that you can't handle it, that doesn't mean you need to start from square one. So say all of a sudden I'm going strong here and I decide I want to do, I'm going to set, I'm even going to say something that sounds a little bit unrealistic for me. Well, it sounds very unrealistic for me. I'm going to do a one hour magical ritual every day centered around grounding. Um, I have no idea even just in saying that where I would work that into my day right now. But say I decide to do that and I, I manage it for two days. I really carve out the time some in some way or another. And then on the third day, I'm unable to do it because, well, it's just not realistic for me. Referencing the realistic tip, but it's not realistic for me. So instead of feeling like a failure, like I'm not good enough or I couldn't handle this and thus I'm not of a certain caliber, I'm not at a certain point or I'm less than because I can't attain this level of daily practice, this level of quote unquote dedication, which I don't think doing certain things necessarily connotes dedication to a craft. But um, yeah, being kind to oneself and I think an act of unkindness to oneself would be to say fully deconstruct the daily practice that you had because you weren't able to fulfill a new responsibility you, you set forth to put upon yourself. Um, I wouldn't want to say, give up the journaling and give up uh, magically charging my, my morning beverages. To me, why would I de deconstruct and try to rethink all of that just because the one new thing didn't work? Or maybe I get a new job and I'm no longer really in the position to, to pull that card draw in the same way. Um, that doesn't mean that I need to deconstruct my daily practice. I can find ways to, and referencing the adaptability. Oh wait, we haven't gotten to that point yet. I'll save that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that doesn't mean that I need to necessarily stop or deconstruct what I've created. Um, just be kind to yourself and understand that sometimes things might work. Times change, your life changes, you as a person change. And so being kind in terms of your daily practice and understanding that it will shift and evolve and that you don't need to to be so critical of it and yourself as far as the person who is performing it. Just be kind and understanding of yourself and to yourself. And our final tip here is to be adaptable. And I was kind of jumping the gun, so to speak, in, in referencing adaptability a little bit in that last tip. But really the whole idea of having a daily practice, like I said before, is to enrich yourself, to, to further your path and ends and means and uh, who you are, you're really trying for, not trying for, but you would hope that some sort of growth comes out of this, that it makes your day better, it enhances your moods. There's, there's so many things that we're hoping to gain from this. So there's no point in being rigid about it, just because every day is going to be different. Each day you're going to be different to some degree. Uh, the, the environmental circumstances are going to be different. In a grander sense, your life is going to be different from today to five years from now. So there's no point in, say, trying to keep up with something that doesn't work for you um, or keep it exactly the way that it is because it used to work and then using the mindset of, well, it used to work, so why I should be able to, to maintain it or keep it. Um, yeah, so just... Be aware of, say, even rigid mindsets. Have an adaptable mind. Be adaptable in practice as far as the physical circumstances go and what you're willing to expend and maybe deciding, for example, maybe my time is more divided and I 
pull a card from the Thoth deck, and then an hour or two later, I have more free time, and I pull open and I read one excerpt from one book, and then I come back in another hour or two, and then I read the next excerpt, and then I go into my journal and write my one quote, and then I come back at the end of the day and I write a little paragraph. It doesn't all have to be done at once. I can pull, I can have my daily draw at the end of the day if I find that my mornings are just not tenable as far as maintaining any sort of practice, uh, of that sort at least, then I can restructure it and move it to the evening. I can decide that I want to scale it back a little bit for now. That doesn't mean that there's less depth to it because I've scaled it back, but there is less time, cons time, Less, it's less time consuming basically so by scaling back I'm hoping to to de-escalate the amount of time but not the depth is really what I'm getting at there so just be willing to be adaptable likewise with that whole being kindness those two I think go hand in hand uh, I think it's easy to get critical of ourselves and our practice when we do have to change it for one reason or another but there's something beautiful about changing it and especially when we're being adaptable and that we realize that we're capable of more and so the way of adapting or being adaptable then would be to expand our practice, to add on that new thing that we feel like we're, we're ready uh, to integrate or that the rest is starting to really feel like it's flowing seamlessly in our day and we can decide to, to incorporate a new, a new practice or a new aspect to our practice. And so I hope that I wasn't just rambling on about the idea of a daily practice in an incoherent way. I hope that those tips were helpful. I find that they're helpful for me. As far as my daily practice goes, it's pretty, I would say, subdued and laid back. I really do take the time with my morning beverage of some sort, and I usually use that as a time to relax while I'm drinking it after I've, say, magically imbued it or with intention and, and such. And then I'll also do my card, uh, that card pull and journaling in the morning, and I do like to try to meditate this is my meditation mat and I like to keep it in view so that way it reminds me to to do that. I'm not as good about say carving out specific spans of time for this. There are times when I will literally just lay on this mat for five minutes and my mind will be chaotic and nothing much comes out of it except for the fact that I laid on that mat for five minutes and as opposed to say being critical of myself I try to understand instead of reprimand why is my mind chaotic? Why? Did I not feel really able to get into the meditation today? Why was I only laying there for five minutes? What about today really put me in that mind state? And why, what can I do to maybe hopefully mitigate that in the future? And if I can't, I can't. And do I need to adapt? Uh, so much to think about. Yes, so those are, I would say, three major parts of my day that are pretty much mainstays and where I'm at currently. I'd love to know about what your daily practice looks like and how it helps you in what ways what you do certain things for um, your tips for maintaining growing starting a daily practice just because I'm always curious and I could use some tips too I'm human and me speaking about tips is by no means me claiming to be an expert on this topic at all so yes if you liked this feel free to like and subscribe and until next time I hope you are all well bye everyone